Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. So I am starting to work on my brand new course which will be about microservices using Vapor Framework. So I just wanted to introduce you very basics of Vapor. What exactly is Vapor and how you can install it on your machine and to get started. So Vapor is a server-side Swift framework. This means that you can create your own server and interact with it. All right, now obviously there are many different technologies that you can use to create your own server, like you can use ASP.NET Node, Django, uh, you can use Ruby on Rails. So now all of this stuff is available using Vapor. And Vapor is not something that just came out. I mean, it has been around for a couple of years, but they just added support for the async and await, which is Swift 5.5 features. So we'll be looking into very basic stuff, how to get started with Vapor. And eventually, uh, I'm working on the course for microservices. We'll be using Vapor for that. And that course will be available sometime next year. All right. So the first thing you need to do is to install Vapor. And in order to install Vapor, I'm just going to go to the documentation and make sure that you have Xcode 13.1. And if you want to use the async and await feature, make sure that you are using Mac OS Monterey. So make sure that you're using that or else you will not be able to use those async and await features in Vapor. So installing Vapor, it's pretty simple. Just use brew, install Vapor, and that's it, you're done. It will automatically install Vapor. Make sure that you have Xcode 13.1, that's very important, all right? Now I have already installed Vapor, so what I am going to do is I'm simply going to jump onto my desktop and going to go ahead and create a brand new Vapor application. So Vapor new, hello Vapor. Or you can write any name you want. I'm not using any template to build the application, so it's going to ask me that, hey, if I want to use Fluent, which is for database, I'm gonna say no. If you want to use Leaf, which is to create server-side pages, I'm just gonna say no. And that's pretty much it. Now I can go ahead and jump into that particular folder and run Vapor Xcode so that I can open it up in Xcode. So now Xcode will be launching 13.1 and I will be able to see what this particular project contains. Now the first time you are going to be launching this, this is going to take a little bit of time, all right? because all of these package and dependencies, they need to be fetched. So that's why it's gonna take a little bit of time, but looks like it's working fine. If I open up my, uh, you can see that this is a Vapor project right over here. And it has uh, many different files over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at a bunch of them. So the test folder is for writing test, all right? Uh, we have a package file which contains all the different packages that we have. We have uh, the app folder and the run folder. The app folder contains controller, which is empty. We have a configure file, which kind of configures the routes and launches the app, or basically the configuration of the app. The routes contain all of our routes. So basically if we go to the root, it's going to return us it works. If we go to root slash hello, it's going to return us hello world. And we have the main file that sets up everything and that launches Vapor. Now in order to run your Vapor server, we will go ahead and click on that play button. And it will hopefully give us some sort of a URL right over here, which is going to indicate that our server is running and it's going to give us a URL of our server. So that's pretty cool that just writing no lines at all, we were able to start our own server. So now I can go to this URL and check out my server that is written in Swift. So let's go back to our code over here. Okay, might have to open up a new window and go to that server. And awesome, it actually says it works. Whenever we go to the root URL, it is automatically saying it works. So this means whenever we go to the root URL, it is going to this particular 
code and running that and returning it works. If I go to hello, then it should return me hello world. So let's go to hello. And it returns me hello world. So it looks like our server is up and running. This is already super exciting that we were able to create our server using Swift. So we are not really leaving the world of Swift and iOS to create our server, which we can, but we are living inside a bubble of iOS and we are using Swift language to create our server also, apart from creating our iOS application. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of different things over here. Inside this function routes, we get past the application or app. So this particular component or the object app contains many different functions that we can use to uh, reply to the request that the user is doing. So if I say app.get, so this is going to be the one that is capturing the get request. There are two, well, there are many kind of requests, but the most common is get and post. So if I say get over here, and I don't really supply that any URL, then it's considered root. Now I can go say request in, and now we need to return something. So I'm just gonna say, this is the root. Now let's go ahead and run this. Okay. Now if I go back over here and I go to hello URL, what do you think is gonna happen? It's not found because if you look at the code over here, there is no route for hello. There is one route which is right over here, which is root route. This is called the root route because you can see that I'm not putting a slash or whatever, anything. It's just going to like google.com, cnn.com. All right, so this means if I just go to this route, we should get this is a root. Okay, so it looks like it's working because I do get a reply from the server, which is simply saying this is a root, which is pretty cool. Now, what happens if I want to go to a particular route? Let's say movies. Well, app, let's just stop the server now. Dot get movies. And what do we want to return from over here? Well, I'm just gonna return movies. That's it, that's pretty much it. Just a string called movies. So now if I go to a route, which is my local host 8080, which is 127.0.0.1, slash movies, I should get movies. Just the text called movies. Slash movies. And looks like it's working. All right, that's fine, but what about if I wanted to go and get horror movies? There we go. Well, in that case, you can simply say horror. So this means that this particular URL, well, first of all, the first one, this one is gonna match slash movies. We already have checked that out. What do you think this is gonna match? movie slash horror. Let's go ahead and run it and check it out. So horror is one of the genres of the movies. So now I can go to horror and well, it returns me movie. So maybe I should have changed the result that we are sending it back also to something. So I'm gonna change it back to horror movies instead of simply movies. And looks like it's working. What about if I simply go to movies? Well, then I get movies. What if I, if I simply go to the root URL? Well, I got the root. But what about if we are building some sort of a website where there are many different genres? I mean, one of them is horror. I guess the other one can be comedy or kids, right? So if I have action, that's another genre, then I should create another route call action. And I should probably return action movies. And this will work perfectly fine, but you can already see a problem, right? I mean, if I have 10 different genres, horror, action, kids, fiction, fantasy, you know, drama, documentary, 
I mean, this will come out to be like eight or 10 different routes. So instead of creating these different routes, what we can do is use something called a route parameter. All right, so in the route parameter, we're going to create a route where we will say that instead of passing horror over here, we're going to be passing an actual genre. I mean, that's not going to be the actual URL without with the quotes or with the uh, colon over here. But this can be substituted. This can be like injected. This is the route parameter. This is dynamic. So let's see that how we can add that route parameter into our code, which is right there. So instead of saying horror, I'm just going to go ahead and put genre, but with a colon. The colon is indicating that this is a route parameter. So this particular route is now going to match everything that conforms to the genre, meaning something that you can pass in. Now that something can be anything. You can pass in horror and that is perfectly fine. So it's going to start matching all of these different routes. Action, kids, because if you look at the URL that we are developing over here, the first part is the movies. The movies comes over here, which is great, it's matching. And the second part that comes is the genre. So the genre is anything that comes after movies, which comes out to be all of these different things. This also means that you can simply pass in A, B, C, D, and that's also fine because it does match this particular route. Now, one of the questions will be, well, okay, that's fine, but uh, inside this particular route that you have, how do you access the genre? How do you access horror or action or kids or whatever the user is passing? How do you access that from the URL? Well, you can easily access it from the request dot parameters dot get and then you say genre and the reason that you're saying genre over here is that that dynamic variable that can be substituted by the user in the url that is called genre if i would have called this category name then guess what should i have called this over here category name but I think genre is a nice word because that is exactly what we're passing. We are going to get that actual genre. I'm going to put it into a variable. If I'm not able to find the genre, then I can probably perform an abort, abort and not found. If I do find genre, then I can go ahead and return genre. In the closure, I do have to specify that I will be returning a string. Okay, now let's go ahead and run this again. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass in some genre. So I'm gonna say kids, and you can see that whatever the genre I'm passing is gonna get returned. What about if I pass in comedy? Comedy. So it looks like we are able to access the genre with the code that we have written. So that's pretty cool, I think, right? Now, one other final thing for this very introductory Vapor video is the post request. The post request is done whenever you want to create something, right? So if you are trying to create a customer, you're trying to create a user, you're trying to create your account, you know, anytime there is something that you want to do to create, to post something back to the server, that is where the post request comes into play. So let's say that we are trying to create a particular movie. So a app dot post the route movies. That's perfectly fine. Now you might say, hold on a second. I thought you already use the route called movies up there. Well, if you look closely, you will realize that this particular route on line number 11 that we created is a get route, but the route or the that we are creating on line number 29 is a post route. So they're completely different and they are invoked, triggered differently. So it's okay if the, the actual wording of the route is same, you will see that 
we will have to invoke it in a very different manner. So if you're posting a particular movie, if you're trying to create a movie, that movie will have a title. And let's say that that movie will have description, like a body or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I will call it DTOs, which stand for data transfer objects. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And I will call it moviedto.swift. Movie DTO, which is content. So that's another thing that is added um, in Vapor, or that's part of Vapor, is that just like you can go ahead and make sure that your class is decodable and encodable, you always use the codable protocol. Whenever you're using Vapor, you can also use content protocol, which content protocol, if you look at the definition of it, it conforms to codable, request decodable, response encodable, and something called async request decodable and encodable. So that's definitely going to help us when we are using async and await. And that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and conform to the content, which also conforms to codable, decodable, and all that stuff. All right. And the first thing will be the title. And let's say the second thing will be the body of that particular movie. Now we're getting a movie, but now the question is, how are we getting the movie? Well, we're getting the movie in the request. So let's go ahead and access the request. Async throws, this is the new stuff that has been added. And what are we going to return from this post? We're just gonna return a post object. Well, not the, sorry, the post object, the movie object, or the movie DTO in other words. Now this request will also contain the actual content. So request might be filled out on some sort of a iPhone application, a form, or even a web application. And when you send the request, the request will have a body that will contain the title and the body, which is going to map over here, title and the body. I mean, if you want to change it to something else, you can say name um, and, and the year of the movie or the genre of the movie or whatever. It doesn't really matter. All right. So this means that whenever we are creating a new movie, we need to pass in the name of the movie and the year of the movie. And now we can go ahead and take the request, the content, which is the actual body of the movie, and decode it to a particular uh, model that we have, which in this case is movie DTO. So basically we are going to take a body which consists of the key and the value pairs, and we are going to decode it into a type that we already have which in this case is movie DTO. This can blow up, so we're just gonna pass it with try. And then, let's call it movie. I'm not sure why I'm calling it post all the time. And then go ahead and return the movie. So this means that whenever you perform a post request, then it's going to extract out the movie DTO or map it to the movie DTO and going to return that DTO back to the client. Now this is all available in macOS 12 or newer. So we need to make a change and that change will be in package.json or package.swift. And we are going to change the macOS from version 10 to 15 to something else. So let's say V12. And now we can go back. Let's go ahead and build this application again. Okay, so it's building correctly. Now the problem is, well, okay, this is a post request. How are we going to do a post request? Unlike the get request, which we have been doing just by typing the URL, that will always give you or trigger the, the get request. Make sure the server is running. But how do we make sure that the post request is working? Well, for the post request, we will have to use some tools, any tool. Now, one of those tools is called Postman. It is available for free, so you can always go ahead and download it. And that's not obviously the only tool. There are a lot of tools like Insomnia and there are Thunder Client and all that stuff you can use, but this is easy to use also. So I'm gonna create a request. 
The first thing is it's not a GET request. I'm trying to do a POST request. So there we go. I also want to get the URL. So let's go and copy part of the URL at least. And part of the URL is this one, slash movies. Headers. Well, we will be sending JSON, so we have to tell the server that we are interested in set, uh, sending JSON. And for the body, I'm just going to select raw, which means that I will type JSON myself. Now, this is the most important part because if you look at the server, right over here, the server is taking the content, which is the body of the request, and decoding it to a model called Movie DTO. If you look at the model Movie DTO, that particular model consists of two different properties, name and the year. So it means that the JSON that you are decoding into Movie DTO over here must contain those two fields, which is name and the year. So if I go over here and write a key called title and whatever it is, Lord of the Rings, then this is completely useless because the server is not able to decode this because the model that you're decoding into does not contain a property called title. It contains a property called name. So you should probably send JSON with a key name. So let's go ahead and call it name. And the other one was year. And I don't really know the year, so I'm just going to say 2001 or something. All right, let's go ahead and send it. And we send the same thing exact back. So this is working because that is exactly what we are trying to do. We decode it to the model, which is movie model, and we simply return the same exact movie. It is automatically converted to JSON thanks to being using uh, content as a conforming to content. So it automatically converts it back to JSON. So this is like a very basic setup when you are using Vapor. And obviously in my course, I will go much more detail into how to integrate it with uh, databases and how to create microservices and all that stuff. Uh, but this will at least get you started with server-side Swift using Vapor and installing Vapor. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed this very basic tutorial. Thank you. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of different courses on Udemy, ranging from Swift UI, MVVM Design Pattern, Swift UI Cookbook, Core Data, Async and Await, Swift for Intermediate Advanced Developer, MVVM Design using Swift UI, and a lot more. And I just got released one of my new courses, which is about testament development. You can definitely check out the links in the YouTube description. I will also include a coupon link for the test-driven development course uh, that will be valid for a couple of days, for three, four days, uh, and then you can use the referral links, all right? So make sure you check out these courses. You are definitely going to enjoy these courses. These are great courses, and you will keep on learning. Thank you so much for your continuous support.